Year 4 The Rule of 64 Bit Robot A Dwarf's Log, First of Granite How did it end up like this? Here I am, out in the middle of freeze to death nowhere, and these crazy dwarves want me to lead them? <laughs> I hate my life. Well, I guess I might as well look over our situation. Not good. Damn. First off, we need more bins. We may have 72 of them, but you can never have too many bins. But we're low on wood, so I can't use all of it up. I order three bins made for around 75 bins. Oh, and uh, apparently we need buckets, so I'm having two of those made. I'm so hungry, but we have so little food. I would put into action a solution to this problem, but we have no kittens. Although I wonder where they got fish in this wasteland. I see fish bones all over the place. We seem to have a bunch of shells. That's good. At least no one will go crazy from lacking a shell to finish some crazy project they would be working on. I found a bunch of bolts, single bolts, clogging up an ammo bin. I've marked them to be melted. Uh, no, they've been marked for melting, but there's no standing order to melt metal objects. I've ordered a metal workshop to melt some metal items. Second of granite. Ow, damn rocks all over the damn floor. I want to do something about them, but there's far more important stuff at hand. Where is that dwarf going? Why is he leaving the fortress? Who knows what's out there? What do you mean he's going to get a metal object for melting? Forget it! Screw melting the metal object. Stay inside the damn fort. Who knows how many random objects outside are designated for melting? Third of granite. I had a cage built near the butcher shop. I'm tired of tripping over these dogs. Fortunately, it seems our farmers are working hard. Food shall be ours! Masterpiece! Masterpiece! More masterpiece! I know already, we have a lot of them. Stop telling me. Fourth of Granite. We have struck Talc! Whoop-de-doo. At least I know where the exploration mines are now. We have many rocks. We have many mechanisms. Put some stonefall traps near the entrance, you lazy oafs. Fifth of Granite. Do I even want to know why I found an entire set of dwarf clothes and a steel shield near the Magma Forge? The bored writings of a fortress overseer. Fifth of Granite. I've just remembered the ultimate defense. A moat! We need a damned moat. I'll settle for a pit at this point, though. Start digging a pit? Why are you all puking? Get out there and dig a pit! Oh, praise be, the river has melted again. We can start filling our cistern with fresh water. Eighth of Granite. Some dwarf named Hankor uh, became a furnace operator. Useful, I suppose. I wonder if we can pump magma up into the moat. Country Matters wrote, I drew a thing I've been wanting to draw since I got my first dungeon master. Hopefully it's funny. Comedy is new to me. It's not really relevant to this particular fortress, just yet it's good practice for if I'm called upon to engrave any future events in our mighty dwarven halls. Sire, the dungeon master has arrived. Very well. Greetings. My lord, perhaps you should consider more clothing? Capital idea. Never pants. Always robes. Explanation. The dungeon master comes wearing only gloves, boots, and a cloak. And then he or she rapidly claims more cloaks to put on top of it. I it seemed funny at the time. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Dwarf slog. Mood about to snap. Ninth of granite. We're under attack. Everyone in the fortress. Now build a damn wall. Anyone outside is lost. We can't save you. Oh god, no. No, the wall didn't go up in time. Screw it! Attack! Get them at a choke point. Oh, that's right, we need to survive. A war dog has been struck down. A quick check on our military's wounds. Kennel is unwounded. Luigi's discount is unwounded. Royal W has moderate injuries to the upper body. 
holistic detective has been cut in half. Their upper body is severed. Their lower body is severely damaged. Their left arm has been severed. They are nauseous and in pain. Oh my. That's not looking good. Holistic detective champion has been struck down. Uh, but then... Spawn of holistic wrestlers sighted over the horizon. Royal W champion has been struck down. Kennel now commands the static paints. Deki, the baby, has been struck down. You shouldn't bring your baby into battle. Luigi's discount has been struck down. Holistic's dog makes a last ditch effort. Why? Why must it end like this? A dwarf slog, ninth of granite. Nah, what, what a horrible dream. Build a wall. Build a wall now. Do it. Good. And keep that wall up. We don't want those, whatever the heck they are, getting in. And, oh, our trade depot. Oh, well, better than our lives. <laughs> Woo. Good thing the fortress has a quickly walled off choke point, right? Skull Buggy wrote, Entry 9, Granite, 3rd year. Armok be damned, the spawn got in again. I swear this is like the 5th goddamn time that we've let these things in. What halfwit's been building the doors to this place? With all this chaos, it's a fucking miracle that we've been getting anything done around here. The damn things even beat back some of our champions. Royal W went down in a blaze of glory though, from what I've heard. He went down screaming and thrashing and kicking and spitting and, and Armok knows what else. I'm gonna miss him. I would have wanted him to rule forevermore, but he let some dunce take the throne instead. No offense to our leader, of course. I just assumed he had our survival in his best interest. I hope to Armak the screaming stops. It's hard to get any rest when all you can hear is shrieking from outside. S. Mangingum, bookkeeper. Entry. Tenth of granite, third year. Oh my god, the screaming! Stop it! I can't sleep! Fifth of granite. Vox Nihili, Bossonida, and Armorer is more experienced. Seriously? The guy's already legendary. 16th of Granite. I decided to interview some random dwarves on what they thought about the fortress. Kurish has been ecstatic lately. Hella Turtle has been ecstatic lately. Gary Khan has been ecstatic lately. They have slept in good bedrooms, dined in legendary dining rooms, and admired many fine works of art around the fort. 17th of Granite. Our well is filling nicely. 20th of Granite. Spawn are still outside. They can't get in. That's good. We've got farms now. Really, a boring position. Not much to do. I want to do something about all these cluttered workshops, but that'll take care of itself in time. There's far too much hauling to do. 23rd of Granite. Uh, um... Go build some tables and chairs in the dining room. 25th of Granite. Plump helmets, the crops have arrived. Start brewing. 9th of Slate. Why are they still out there? 11th of Slate. Three puppies were born. Into the cage they go. 18th of Slate. We shall be renowned for our great silk products. A masterwork cave spider silk bag. This is a cave spider silk bag. It is made from exceptional cave spider silk cloth. On the item is a finely designed image of Bob the Third, Crowled Lashes, the dwarf and dwarves in cave spider silk by Bobatron Tath Tatalon. Bob the Third, Crowd Lashes is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Bob the Third, Crowled Lashes, to the leadership of the Romantic Glaze in the early spring of 138. It is made from finely crafted cave spider silk cloth. Kurish Keltusid Weaver Cancers Collect Webs, taken by Mood. Kurish has been taken by a Fey Mood. Well, at least we have shells. Kurish has claimed a clothier's shop. Eh, this works, I guess. He's already a Grand Master Weaver. And he just goes next door to get some cloth that he probably made. And then down to the metal smithing area to get some gold bars. This is probably going to be a damn fine pair of clothes. After Kurish grabbed those gold bars, I heard he apparently got some iron bars. And after that, 
Surprise, surprise, a shell. Kurish has begun a mysterious construction. I am so glad this went off without any problems. 25th of Slate. Kurish is done with his project. Kurish the Weaver has created Merangimush, a cave spider silk trousers. This is a cave spider silk trousers. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is made from cave spider silk cloth. This object menaces with spikes of gold, iron, and turtle shell. On the item is an image of Desert Vision, the spry rawness, the golden low boot in cave spider silk. Merangamush, the languishing dyke. A set of cave spider silk trousers. Basic value, 55,200 dwarf bucks. I don't really do much. I walk around and yell orders. This place works, but it doesn't work really well. There's a lot of backlog. This may be a good year. I feel good about it, but I can't take credit. Luckily, when I arrived, there were already farms, which means we can survive for quite a while. Well, enough of this. Back to overseeing. We're out of booze. This could be bad. Aside, if I'm not mistaken, Legendary is a step up from Grandmaster, right? Well, our Grandmaster Weaver became a Master Weaver via Artifact. I was hoping that clothes making and weaving cloth were separative, but they aren't. A count of the masterwork since I've been in power. Masterpiece count. Gerblin has made 40, Skaw has made 2, and Kurish has made 4. Kithrix wrote, Fan arts of holistic spawn flavor, also requesting immediate dwarfing. Skullbuggy wrote, Entry, 20th of Granite, 3rd year. Good lord, the spawn have been roaring at us from outside for what seems like a week now. I keep hearing them banging against my walls every so often, screaming for meat. You know, if I had any meat at all, I'd be a happy dwarf. Although all they've sent my way is the stuff the pickier dwarves have nibbled at. Gross. You know, I honestly thought being a bookkeeper would have been a more exciting job. I guess it's not as cool as I thought. And I still don't have a goddamn bookshelf. Entry 25, Granite, third year. So, we learned how to cultivate cave fungus, whoop the shit. Not get me a damn office anytime soon. In other news, I read up on some of my books I've got around here. Seven Habits of Highly Effective Dwarves, One Flew Over the Cave Swallow's Nest, Kama Sutra for the Dwarven Co. Uh, who, who put that in there? 20th the Slate, third year. Kurish has been acting a bit weird today. He's been grabbing as many spider webs as he can, and he's been holding himself in his little nook and just going to town on the stuff. Got no damn idea why, but I suspect it's one of those weird artist things. 25th of Slate. Kurish was making pants. Gold pants. Spiked gold pants. With a picture of a boot on them. I'll never get artists, and apparently I'll never get a goddamn office, come the fuck on! An update on the masterpiece count. Gerblin has made 92, Skaw 2, and Kurish 24. Seventh of Felsite. The days drag on by. Although while I wasn't paying attention, the White Crane became a jeweler. I'm not sure what he was before, but I think he might have been a useless peasant. Congratulations on becoming slightly less useless. Eighth of Felsite. Our butcher wasn't doing much, so I decided to have him try some brewing. We've got a lot of plum helmets now. Eleventh of Felsite. Not much to do, although I'm gonna be here forever. And I need to do something useful, I think. All right, miners, start digging that tunnel out. I'm not gonna be here forever, and I'd prefer a jail to a hammerer any day. We're going to have one eventually, so I might as well make sure prisoners get treated well. 14th of Felsite. The good news is we have drinks. The bad news is we still don't really have that great food. 19th of Felsite. I saw a Batman in the caves behind us. I heard some of our military dwarves take it out. Didn't even call it a battle. It was over before it started. 22nd of Felsite. The Horde Master seemed quite bored now that he's finished all the records, so I decided to send him on engraving duty. Besides, now I can make his office while he's gone. There's really no 
offices around here? How can anyone be expected to get anything done? Ninth of Hematite. Merchants, merchants, the siege is over. Finally, down with that wall, up with the depot. Quickly now. Fourteenth of Hematite. The merchants asked us what we would like for next year. I mostly replied, wood and food. Seventeenth of Hematite. Puppies, in the cage you go. Twentieth of Hematite. Finally got the depot up. The merchants are unloading their goods. And I have a plan. A great plan. Oh, by Armak, everyone's puking. This is disgusting. We need some skylights, I think. 25th of Hematite. Finally, we could trade. We traded a bunch of crafts for food and ale and brewable plants. <laughs> food. 3rd of Malachite. The export agreement. I, I figure someone might want to look at it. Tenth of Malachite. Construction on my project is going slow. This bodes ill for my second project. Fourth of Galena. The White Crane Tathiel Ficod jeweler cancels drink, taken by mood. The White Crane has been possessed. Another one? Well, I won't complain, except for the lack of legendary status. The White Crane has claimed a jeweler's workshop. We don't have any gems right now. This might be bad. Quick, go mine some. Eh, uh, never mind. Looks like we had some. Well, it looks like we need some more, so mine! Mine! Eighth of Galena, the White Crane begins a mysterious construction. Had to dig out some crystals, but at least we're not going to have an insane dwarf. The fortress attracted no migrants this season. Aww. Twelfth of Galena, the White Crane is done. The White Crane Tethelfikod jeweler has created Inselod Kish Rumad Dakun, an onyx door. Gang Ferns, the Dull Hawk. This is an onyx door. All crafts dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with onyx and diorite. This object menaces with spikes of black zircon. On the item is an image of dwarves in rock crystal. The dwarves are laboring. The artwork relates to the foundation of syrup leaf by the romantic glaze of the Gate of Climaxes in the early spring of 138. On this item is an image of a blazing sun, in diorite. Base value, 33,600 dwarf bucks. I know exactly where to put this. 18th of Galena. I've discovered many things, mainly that I won't be able to make a great pointless monument, but I can make the entrance to our fortress as amazing as possible. First of Limestone. Autumn has arrived, only a short two seasons until I'm done. Deki has grown to become a child. Tenth of Limestone. The Hamlet liaison from Enod Lear has arrived. A caravan from Enod Lear has arrived. Eh, some good news, we can trade again. Twelfth of Limestone. Good thing I positioned the military by my project. A Batman tried to get to a peasant. Sixteenth of Limestone. Time to trade. We traded our mini crafts for food, booze, and wood. Eighteenth of Limestone. The liaison asked what we'd like to trade for. Food, booze, and wood, I told him. We finally decided on the export agreement. Sixth of Sandstone. I'm starting to doubt if I have time to complete my project. I guess I'll have to compromise on it. First, though, these have been bugging me. Time to put the military to good use. Several troglodytes are being combated. It is going excessively well. Oh, wow, that's... Uh... From what I can tell, Holistic knocked one away through the air, then ran towards a flying troglodyte and killed it while it was flying. Holistic decided to take a break and let Royal W finish off the last three. He launched one into another, then proceeded to kill them in all in about one swing. The troglodyte cavern is covered in blood and body parts. Twelfth of Sandstone. The hard part's done. Now for some minor touches to make it Perfect. Fourteenth of Sandstone. Farewell, merchants. Twenty-sixth. Some migrants have arrived. Weaponsmith. Tanner. Four peasants. Carpenter. Cheesemaker. Ranger. He's gonna kill himself, I can tell. And a gem setter. I don't have the time right now to examine them, but I should do it soon. Eighth of Timber. Gold Jazz Rigoth Tholun. Armorer. Cancel sleep. Taken by mood. 
Goljaz has been possessed. They have claimed a magma forge. Pig iron bars? Ninth of timber, a shell. Tenth of timber, another shell, a rock, diorite. Rough black zircon, he's still going. What the heck else is he getting? Some more black zircons, apparently. Still more? This is the seventh item. Amazonite this time. He's he's still getting items. Dog leather this time. Gold Jaws has begun a mysterious construction. Eight items. Eight items. This had better be good. 20th of timber. Gold Jaws Rigotholun armorer has created Astesh Lek, a pig iron chain leggings. This is a pig iron chain leggings. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with diorite and black zircon, decorated with cave lobster shell and dog leather, and encircled with bands of pig iron. This object menaces with spikes of black zircon. On the item is an image of two full moons in cave lobster shell. On the item is an image of a pike in Amazonite. Basic value, 88,800 dwarf bucks. 23rd of timber, mandate, make a battle axe, do it. 25th of timber, Squaw's dog is being harassed by a Batman. I'm sending in the military. 26th of timber, maybe I don't need to worry. Seems the dog won. I'm sending in the military anyways to beat up the Batman. First of Moonstone, winter's upon us. 15th of Moonstone. Holistic found a cobalt thief trying to sneak in. He smacked the thief into the mountain. It exploded. Vox Nihali posted, By the way, 64-bit robot, who are we up to on the dwarfing list? Well, let's see. We've got SWAT Jester, Idea Keeper, A124, Ilarkal, Mystical Haberdasher, Feros, Ultimate Quicks, Eumenides, Flocks of Mice, and a 64-bit robot. It's up to Flocks of Mice, and no one else has died. 15th of Opal. Finally. I can't believe we had to rebuild that part of the project. Although the gold wall is really a good addition if I do say so myself. Truly, it will show the merchants our wealth. I guess I should figure out what I'm gonna do. Captain of the Guard seems like a good position, so uh, there I'll be. 25th of Opal. Luigi's discount has given birth to a girl. Baby Flat Banana Adilasol has been born. Damn, I've been injured. Now I'm laying stuck in this bed. Who knows how long before I'll ever be able to move again. 12th of Obsidian. Screw it. Can't lead like this, just laying in bed. The next dwarf that comes to give me food is getting this job. New Year. You! Hey, about time someone brought me food. Anyways, you're the new overseer. Have fun. Our new gatehouse is complete. The bridge on the right of the trade depot raises towards the right. I forgot, but if spawns destroy bridges, you might want to fix that, make it a retractable bridge. Here's how it works. Most times, the bridge on the right is down, and the bridge on the left is up. When traders come and unload, you lower the left bridge. During a siege, raise the right bridge, and the side bridges of the gatehouse. Also of note is all the statues, in the middle of them a tower cap statue, and to the left of that, an onyx door. Another image of my project. The gold wall is, well, it's just showing off. The bridges retract. They're all hooked up. Wagons come up the brook. It's the only possible way. The jail. Prisoners are treated to a bed and a nice silk rope. They can be viewed through the steel bars. Also the office and dining room of Captain of the Guard. Bobbin Threadbare wrote, Even now, I find myself hesitant in writing this account. Many will likely find me to be mad for writing of the things in the coming pages, and I cannot but ponder my own sanity at having witnessed the dark deeds and frightful monsters which populate this frozen region in which I found myself. Perhaps in committing these thoughts to paper, I can come to some sort of resolution regarding the evil that I have witnessed. And perhaps, if my story reaches the eyes of others, 
I can warn them away from the dire fate which doubtlessly awaits them should they stray too far from the civilization which we dwarves have erected around ourselves. When I first heard of the fortress known as Syrup Leaf, I marveled at its remote location. Dwarven explorations had been known to travel to such distant places, but to erect a settlement there seemed a momentous undertaking. Its sparse population only served to whet my appetite further. I've never been one to engage socially, my only contact with others coming through the necessities of my trade. Being a gem cutter of some note, I find myself more at home among the gems and jewels of the earth than among the boisterous companionship of other dwarves. The peculiar gleam of fire opal, the amazing quality of clarity held by crystal glass, these carry my full attention, and knowing that my trade is as ubiquitously valuable as the precious materials I deal in, I packed what little I considered valuable and joined the next caravan headed to my new home in the southern ice fields. Little did I realize what horrors awaited me in that distant fortress. 64-bit robot intermission. 64-bit robot posts a uh, rendition of the onyx door that they got as an artifact. I might just open it up and paint up fro and try it a little harder to make it look nice, but I just drew this in three minutes to have something. Oh, and this, it's a clerk's office. <laughs>